Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Here's my commercial photography website. It's a Squarespace one and I absolutely love it. They are easy to set up, they look amazing, there are hundreds of templates to choose from and they have first class customer support. If you want one too, then use this URL and the coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and I'm with Richard Curtis from Adobe. Good to see you, Richard, again. Hi, Carl. Absolutely. Great welcome, to see you as always. Welcome to our studio. Uh, very impressive. Um, now, while we've got you here, um, I thought we'd uh, dig into your encyclopedic knowledge <laughs> of uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. What are you going to show our viewers today? You know, we get asked a lot about the workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop and it kind of not confuses people, but I think people are always looking for a nice link between the two applications mm -hmm. and when to hand off onto, say, Photoshop from Lightroom and, and how to make your picture look amazing and this yep. type of thing. So I thought we'd just do a very simple retouch in Lightroom yep. and then go across into Photoshop and explain why I tend to use Photoshop mm -hmm. and then show some non-destructive qualities uh, uh, between us. And I believe we're going to also look a little bit at smart objects in that process as well. We are, yeah. So smart objects has been around for a long time and, and in the in Creative Cloud, it's kind of really come on leaps and bounds and yep. it really helps the image maker really kind of, you know, have that non-destructive workflow all the way between the products. So it's really uh, kind of a, a nice thing to show. And they stay almost intertwined now, don't they, with the workflow between the two yeah so the workflow is absolutely seamless between the two and you can go back and re-edit your um, raw edits from Lightroom even when you're in Photoshop and you made some adjustments wow. with adjustment layers and stuff wow. so it's pretty powerful stuff it almost turbocharges your, uh, okay. your, your workflow so we're starting here with a base raw file DNG file um, we are. Where, where is this what is it just out of interest yes yeah, so this is the picture I shot in the Lake District um, in, in the middle of last year and, and I really quite like it I love the I love the kind of tree and the way mm. it kind of arcs in that right hand corner of the, uh, of the scene but you know I think some lovely thundery clouds here as well. It was going to rain. Dappled light <laughs> on the mountain. So yeah. you're going to look to enhance this and bring something else out of this here. I'm going to look to enhance it and also apply um, something I've been working on in Photoshop for a while. Um, you know, being I, I like the kind of old classic printing processes, yeah. right? and I love the platinum process. Is that because you're an old classic yourself? I'm old classic <laughs> myself. <laughs> So I'm going to, you know, I've, I've been working with Photoshop a little bit, trying to make this new preset thing that I, yep. I've done. And I can only do it in Photoshop. I can't do it in, in Lightroom. Um, and we're going to apply that to it, which kind of gives a really weird um, black and white infrared look. So okay. we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do that. Which I'm looking forward to see it. A lot of my pictures okay, well, you see. fire away and talk us through what you can. And if I see anything, I want to ask any questions. I'll just ask you as you're as you're working along. Perfect. Okay, let's just go into full screen quickly. Use the F key to go into full screen so you can see, see the picture come up. And you can see there that it's got, I think, the nice structure. It's got a very strong element in this, in this right-hand corner at the bottom. As you said before, it's got these beautiful kind of mountains in the background that really add a nice kind of mm, um, the light strong element. As well, I love yeah, and this light over here. And, and mm. you know, it's a moody day, like you said. It was mm. going to rain, but actually the camera's caught it as a very flat image and that's mm. what we get typically when we shoot raw yeah okay so there's no processing done so i think you know i want to kind of really emphasize the fact that it was it was quite a moody day um but this beautiful kind of um this kind of old uh, tree in the in the foreground so really yeah. emphasize that yeah now so i'm just going to move out of full screen f back into um the normal lightroom view again and if we start looking at this picture there's a few things that we can do and, and to make it stronger very quickly without really having to do a lot of work to the picture and I think um, as we move into the development module we obviously got all these tools and and Lightroom is really a and, and Photoshop's the same as a as a toolkit yeah it's got all these tools in there but you don't have to use every single one of them to make them no amazing. absolutely no so the first thing I would do here is look at the compositional element I'm gonna take off the information off there look at the composition element I think it can be made a little bit stronger by just removing part of this scene there's nothing going on in this section here so I'm gonna tighten it crop crop in a little, little bit, bit. Yep. and just crop in so mm -hmm. again non-destructive crop and I, I always tend to use the golden mm. circle right you know, yep. to kind of really add strength into the and you've got various image. overlays such as rule of thirds the golden circle triangle all the different right. ones that you exactly. can set on those I know from in Photoshop um, 
Uh, those are all the, there in the crop tool, or you can turn them off as well. You can turn them off as well. It just aids me, it kind of, you know, things on this line for me are going to add power mm. to this image. So I want to get this right on that power source, which mm. is that line over there. So uh, I'm just going to use the crop, and now I'm going to keep it in the original aspect ratio with the, with the lock. Mm -hmm. And all I'm going to do is just um, pull up at the bottom a little bit and just pull in the top, yep. just to kind of add strength. Mm. And that's all I'm going to do. Yeah, and press take that out key. that little mountain edge that was just jutting in from the right hand side. Right. It was a little bit of a distraction. So yeah, I don't think gone. it really does anything. No, so I just want to no, keep it nice and tight. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the next thing I'll do, and, and one of the, I, I got this from a, a mentor of mine who I do a lot of photography with, and um, he's always very conscious of things in the in the picture that really catch our eye, and and it's the white things that catch oh. our eye. So if we just zoom in here, you'll see all these little white specks on the floor. And it's nice because they're little, little flowers in the, in the ground, but you know, for the eye, for a, a viewer seeing this picture, that's really gonna put them off, mm. I think. So I'm just gonna go in very quickly with the, with the clone heel tool in Lightroom and use my um, bracket keys just to increase the size of that and just to increase the, the feather that you can see over here, just to increase that slightly. Yeah. And I press, um, I click on the area I want to get rid of and just, um, remove that from the scene. Yeah. And Lightroom does a really good job of doing yeah. that. So and you I just basically found another source area from the photo that worked well over the top of that. And it's just yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's just similar to the clone tool in Photoshop, just uses it slightly different method. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go through here and look for other areas that I don't like. And you can see here, we've got this other element here. And of course in Lightroom 5, we brought out the advanced healing brush, which means that now I don't have to stick to this disc I can actually just use a, a mark, mm. so I can just draw on there and tell Lightroom what I want to get rid of and give it a mask and then put that mask into position and, mm. and get rid of it. So it just kind of hides that area that I really don't want, to, don't want to see and I can carry on over here. And if we look over here, there's a few spots. I'll just get rid of them very quickly just by getting rid of them, zapping them. There's a big one over here, which I really, I'm not very impressed with, so I'll get rid of that. And then of course, there's this branch over here. And I know if I print this, onto something like an ice A2, the first thing I'm gonna see is this branch. And every mm. time I see that branch, it's gonna distract me from the real image. So for me, I've just gotta get rid of that as well. So just cleaning up in a dark room, we used to call it spotting. Mm. It's as simple yeah, as that. Yeah, done manually really. with brushes. Exactly, <laughs> little discs and yeah. cards and yeah. this sort of thing. So, yeah. so hopefully, if we just go into full screen now, you should be able to see that it's really cleaned up this bottom section mm -hmm. and it just focuses my eye on this, on this uh, tree. Sure. Um, I really want to kind of focus on a little bit of exposure just to kind of brighten things up a little bit. It's a bit flat. So I'm just going to press the done button to come out of there and just go into the exposure and just increase the exposure a little bit. I'm going to press the alt key down to see where I start to clip. And I don't want to clip anything. So I just want to pull that highlight back a little bit. And then of course, go into highlights and shadow recovery so I can maximize the tonal range of this mm -hmm. image. So I'm going to go into the highlights I can use the Alt key again just to see where I'm going to clip the highlights and I'm not clipping, so I can go all the way to the left. And then the shadows come all the way to the right, okay? And it opens that image up quite, quite nicely. And then I can set my white points and black points. And again, I can just use it's the clipping preview. clipping preview and yeah. set the blacks. Now, I, I like clipping black. It mm. adds nice contrast mm. to the image and it just sets it up quite nicely. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna put a bit of clarity in just to give it a bit of a boost. And you can see, if I go full screen there, that's what the image looks like now. And if I look at a before and after view, mm. look at the difference, if I just yeah. zoom Already. in. Look at the difference, it's, it's huge with mm. four or five sliders. Yeah. But you know, I think the sky especially needs a little bit more work. Yeah, I'd like to see that sky pull back down darker, I think, from, right. from where we are now. Exactly, exactly. So I'm just gonna go back, use lights out. So come out of lights out with the L key and then shift and tab to bring my panels back and back into single view mode. And then I'm gonna use the gradient filter, which I, I love the gradient filter, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. And I'm gonna pull the gradient in from the top as we would do if we were just taking a an imaging camera with a with a grad on with the camera. grad, yeah, which I regularly use. Yeah, absolutely. And then just dial that down. It was a really miserable day, and I didn't have mm. my tripod with me or my grad with me, so, yeah, so you know, I just do it a little bit yeah. later on. Yeah. And you can see that as I dial the exposure down. Wow. Look at that sky; yeah, it's really, really effectively, isn't it? comes out. Yeah, mm. really quite nice. I'm going to pull this down just below the mountains, but 
I'm conscious that it's going to darken down the mountains, so I'm just going to I'll do it for now. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later on. You can see there that the yep. impact now is is, yeah. is huge, right? Yeah. It's got a real drama. drama so, so with pulling that grad down, you've now come and cut in a little bit over the mountains. You've pulled the grad down at an angle. Right. It's overlapped that hill on the left and the top of the mountain. Right. That's something we're going to be able to deal with after? We are. We're going to go into camera row in a few minutes and, and fix that out. Right. Because obviously when you're dealing with grads and when you're dealing with grads in a camera, you would never have it horizontal, right? You no, always you, tilt it so you can't see it. To suit the environment, yeah. Exactly. So we come out of full screen and go back in and press the done button. Now the last thing I'm going to do is convert this to black and white. I want to have a lot of impact and drama in there. So I think black and white might just do that for me. And this special process that I have requ requires me to just to add a split tone. Mm -hmm. And this is going to look a little bit wacky. So don't get too kind of um, too hung up on the way it looks in a minute because we're going to fix it in a, in a few minutes to add this extra special process. Okay. And to do that, I'm going to go into split toning. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to put in some values in here. I'm going to try 39, 25, 25, uh, 240.99. So let's just let's just recap here. With split toning, what we're doing is we're changing the highlight tones and the shadow tones to different independent tones, and then Correct. varying the amount of saturation you're applying to the highlights and to the shadows. Correct. Commonly used in color photos as well to add those strange sort of Instagrammy looking effects as well, Correct. that type of thing. But also used in black and white. Um, to create almost what you've got, like a selenium looking like tone a selenium coming, coming tone. into it here. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to go in here and I just added some, uh, you know, some really light brown into the highlights and some blue into the shadows. And I'm mm. going to use this to convert this into almost like an infrared effect. Use that blue to right. convert to infrared effect. And then I've just balanced out the hue, the the highlights and shadows just with this balance yeah, slider. You can shift the, ba yeah. the balance of strength more towards the highlights or towards you can. the shadows. Yeah, so if you want to pull that across yeah. to the balance onto the left and move towards the shadows, it goes more blue and moves to the right, it goes more mm. uh, it goes more brown. So I want it right. somewhere in the middle, yeah. about 25-ish, something like that. Now obviously I want to bring that into Photoshop, but I want to I want to keep it intact as a raw file with just the adjustments. I don't mm. want to commit to a, a TIFF or to anything no. else too early. No. And everything we've done so far is non-destructive and it will continue to be so right. as you work on this file. Exactly. So to do that, I'm going to employ something called Smart Objects inside Photoshop. And, and it's really easy to come up. And, and a lot of people will go into Photoshop at this point using Apple E or Control E on a PC. But what I'm going to do is right click and edit in Photoshop as a Smart Object, which is okay. available on the context menu right. as you right click. What this will do, just to explain a little bit about smart objects, is it will wrap up the raw file and the metadata mm -hmm. into a layer. Okay. And that layer contains those adjustments. So nothing's been converted out now. Right. Nothing's been rasterized. It's still a raw file with adjustments. Okay. And what you're seeing here looks the same as you typically would do anyway mm. when you brought it into Photoshop, mm -hmm. except you've got this little indicator yes. here, which is... The corner the little corner piece. Mm. And this is basically telling me that this contains more than one object, it contains something right. else, okay? And I can double click on that at any point in time and it opens up Camera Raw right. with all of my adjustments, which exactly. I can then and camera can raw, manage. Camera Raw is the same engine, same features that you had within the Lightroom adjustments. Right. So you can now continue on that process exactly. using the Camera Raw. Exactly. But I won't do that just later. I'm just gonna leave that for a second and come back. So I wanna mm -hmm. see what the, um, the adjustment I'm gonna make is to this image and see where I have to fix this up a little bit later on because it will have an impact. Now the actual um, image I want to use is, is also available in Lightroom and I'm just gonna um, find that. So here's an image that I, I shot on the same day. Mm, so I'm lovely. making a story, it's really dramatic, it's mm. beautiful light coming in here in the mountains and I wanna be able to use that, um, that process I've created to give me that same look on this picture. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just right click this. Now I'm going to edit this in Photoshop, not as a smart object. So this is a PSD mm -hmm. and I want to open up the PSD as a PSD, not as an encased smart object. So right. I'm going to do this and it will open that up into Photoshop, but it asks me if I want to open the original or with adjustments. Right. But I want to up the base because I've already started making changes in Photoshop. So I want to add Lightroom adjustments to it because it will rasterize everything. Mm -hmm. I want to keep it all non-destructive, so I go and open this as a PSD. And once that's opened, you'll see it has these two 
layers. Mm -hmm. And these two layers are a tonal layer to fix um, some yellow and blue um, hue and saturation. And I also have a what's called a gradient map, which will turn tones and remap them to be a different tonal range. Okay. So I want to use these two. So I'm just going to drag the image out and into a separate window. Now I can see the original image and the new image on a separate window, but have a single layers palette. Right. Okay. But I can then just drag these two layers oh, interesting, yeah. into my new image. Mm -hmm. And you can see yep. it applies the Apply, yep. effect straight away. Now yep. I can obviously go in here and I can remap these if I need to do. So mm -hmm. I might want to go in and remap the levels. Yeah, tweak them to suit the... this particular yeah, image a little bit better. Absolutely, yeah. because it may need to be, you can see here if I, if you look at here, I can just need to tighten this up a little bit to get a bit more impact. And I can do that very quickly, okay? Now you can see that I've got this issue here with this really dark edge over this mountain. Mm -hmm. so I want to where the grad just, came down. Where the grad came down. So I want to dial that back a little bit. It doesn't really affect this so much where the grad also goes over. It's just mm. really this area over yeah, here. Yeah, that looks a bit dark. It looks a bit dark. Mm. A little bit too dark, mm. I think. I mean, you yeah. could get away with it, but I think it's yeah. a little bit too dark. So all I'm gonna do now is, even though I've applied these layers in Photoshop, mm -hmm. I'm gonna double click on this smart object that we brought in from Lightroom and reopen the image and the adjustments that came from Lightroom. Yeah, so okay. it's transferred those Lightroom adjustments into the camera raw function in Photoshop as they were set in Lightroom. Exactly. So, you know, nothing's been changed. It hasn't rasterized it. I can still get access to all those Lightroom adjustments. And now what I need to do is just go back into these same tool set that I had in Lightroom mm -hmm. and just go to my gradient filter. And I see there's my grad that I pulled in yep. with a mask applied. And what I can do is I can either turn the mask on or keep it off, but I can also go into the brush. And the brush is a way that I can cut out the effect of the grad over yes. certain parts of the image and really select where I want to have that grad right. So you're, you're creating your own custom gradient based on the shapes in your image by adjusting the mask applied to right. that grad. Exactly, exactly. So to do that, um, by default, I have um, a plus indicator on the, on the mask tool. And that means I'm gonna add more uh, mask in to this grad, but I wanna get rid of it and remove it. Mm. So to do that, I can either use a little negative here on the, mm -hmm. on the brush itself, because you see there's the brush controller, mm -hmm. and I, or I can use the Alt key, which will switch this to be a minus. Yep. And when I do that, I can then remove that area of the mask out yep. to reveal to lighten the mountain. Up, lighten that bit and lighten and up. And it, it lightened up a little bit above the mountain. You could it tighten did. that brush tool down smaller and bring that back in again. Absolutely, if I just go in now and just, just reduce the size of my brush, and just reduce the feather, because mm. I need to feather this in now within the actual, yes. with the mountain. And I might want to turn auto mask on, which will look at the contrast differences okay. and protect me from going into the mountain right. too much. I can then go in and use my Alt key to there paint that area in, right. and there you so go, and back that, to where I was. Back. Do we have still control even further to adjust, adjust that grad now? Uh, as it was so, now looking at it we might say well actually maybe that yeah. grad's too dark now maybe that's a great question back. yeah so because because we've applied the adjustment using the tonal range fix that i've got in photoshop this is a great time now to go back into camera raw and actually start tweaking it a little bit mm. and it's too early in lightroom to do that because i haven't applied the effect yet. yes yeah. so now i can go in and if that's the case i can just commit this brush change and then apply my um exposure and just dial this up or dial this down and get it where it needs to be and then press OK. And what will happen now is it will apply those adjustments to my Photoshop image and then reapply the adjustments I make. Let's mm. get rid of this and you can see it. It then reapplies the effect of the two layers yes. over and above the smart object that I've modified. Right. Okay. Excellent. Now, the next thing I might want to do with this, of course, is like in the example I just showed you, is, is to add a signature 
into here. Now, one of the things that photographers like to do is add that signature as a watermark. Mm. But I've kind of customized it and I've got different effects based upon different images. And I want to apply it in Photoshop because that's, you know, I want to keep it non-destructive and have it in here. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to reference a file with my signature. So if my signature changes, I can then update the signature and then update the images that have used that signature so I'm not locking myself into that workflow right, so and having it embedded into this file. Right, so it'll be there and if you change your logo, change your signature, right. you would change that particular uh, file and it'll update it on Correct. the images that it's already been applied to. Exactly. And that file actually exists inside Lightroom as well, which is my signature file, mm -hmm. which is here. So I'm just going to go out to um, just to into Finder very quickly and just find that which is there. Okay, so that's the file I want to use. So I minimize Lightroom down. Now what I'm going to do is use in Photoshop something called Place Linked. And this is new in CC. And what it's referring to is the fact that I can now link to an external object and not embed it inside the Photoshop file, which A, gives me that non-destructive quality, but it also keeps it free for reuse in other photos as well. Mm -hmm. And it also keeps it linked. So if I change it in the future, I then go into the, um, it, back into this photograph that used that effect, and then I can, it, it will then change, based upon the contents of the linked file, will change the, change the picture that's using it. Okay? I hope that made sense. More or less. More or less. <laughs> so I'm, you'll, you'll, see, yeah, you'll no, see it in a second. No, it if made, I go it made sense. It I'm made just going sense, to, Richard, I, could, I can embed it if yeah. I want to do, but there's no point in embedding it if I want to keep the file size low, keep Photoshop yeah. nice and snappy and performant, mm. and just and, and, and link it in. So I can go to place linked. And I'm just going to do that very quickly by going back to that finder area later and just drag it over here so I know exactly where it is and place that in. And it will basically link that and now you're seeing mm. the template come through. It might be in the wrong place, and it also might be the right size and the wrong size, mm. so at which point I can use the transform tools. I'm gonna scale this in proportion, so I use the Shift and the Alt key, just to scale this down to see where it needs to, to, where it needs to be, about, probably about there maybe, mm. and press the Enter key. At which point I'll choose the Move tool and move that into position about there I think it's quite nice mm. now the cool thing about this is that I have different looks of I have different logos with different look and feel based mm. upon different images so if yeah. it's a color one I might want a different effect if it's a black and white I might want another effect and what I can do and the beauty of having this technique is that inside this um, object if I open it up using edit contents now in the mm -hmm. properties panel it will open up the file form as a separate window and what you're seeing here is lots of effects using the uh, layer effects in yep. Photoshop. And then down here we have something called layer comps. Layer comps are a great way to store a preset mm -hmm. of a look in a file. And you can see I've got maybe 10 or 12 in there and I can tailor them and tweak them. But the nice thing is I can save it at a certain point in time. So for example, if I turn this one on, which is white background and purple text, you can see okay. it changes very yep. quickly and it reapplies mm. the, the modes mm. inside the layers. So you've got a, almost like a, a catalogue yep. of preset effects yep. to your logo, exactly. ready to go, ready to update on any of your images at exactly. any time. Yep. So if I go back now to my, op to my file that I want my logo to be, on the properties now of this linked smart object, mm -hmm. I can go in and show all of the effects. Mm. So if I want this to have a white background and purple text, I can just click it mm -hmm. and it will go and change and it, bring it updates through. It. Yep. Yeah, it updates it there. So I can then tailor the logo to this picture to be exactly mm -hmm. as I want it to be from a predefined yep. um, look and feel from another. Yeah. So that it's not sort of image. overpowering the image, whatever you feel works best with this image. Right. And, and this is your way of watermarking it sort of for protection or whatever yeah. and, and showing it online. I mean, personally, it's such a nice image with what you've done to it there as well. It's like, I wouldn't have it on there at all myself. No, and I wouldn't actually, <laughs> I wouldn't, but, but, but yeah, it's I a see nice you're demonstrating of, the, yeah. the technique of how, how it can link through and up, update. Um, so is, uh, is, are you kind of at the finished stage now with the image? Are you happy with yep. how it's looking? That's yep. pretty much where okay. I would leave it. Could we then, just before we wrap up, uh, turn your logo off and take a look at the original raw file and the final image, just flick between yep, the two absolutely. so we can see 
the difference of, uh, of what you've done. So I'm just going to save this now in Photoshop and yeah. go back into Lightroom so you can see the two, yeah, together. See the two together. And it will come straight back into, uh, into Lightroom as you see here, it's building it now. So if we just go to the original, which was here. I'm going to reset this back to the original yeah. using Shift Command R to Or you could go it. to the before view anyway, couldn't you? In the um, in the settings, before and after view, couldn't you? I, I could, but I'm not going to be able to see the before and after the Photoshop files. So right, I want to be okay. able just to have two. Okay. And to that, I'm just going to go into the library mode and use survey mode. Yeah, so we can get the two up. Yeah, get the two I want. And then I'm going to select them both and then use Shift and Tab and then it lights out so you can see them. Yeah. And then you can see there's Amazing. the effect. So it took, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, and you've really punched some life and contrast out of that image. That grass has got some real texture to it right. now. The tree has got some gnarly right. texture to it as well. Actually, the tree has definitely become more separated from the right. environment and the background to really make it a feature of the image. Right. Everything's become uh, you know, definitely enhanced in that shot. So you've taken, as you said, what was quite a gray, miserable, rainy day and turned it into a more spectacular, um, black and white, more akin to the sort of Ansel Adams style right, shots yeah, from exactly. y Yosemite. <laughs> yeah, so it's amazing what you've been able to do with exactly, that in yeah. that and short just space of time. Yeah, just yeah. a 10 minute, uh, 10 minute process. So, uh, well, um, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you to Richard for your uh, wonderful knowledge on the uh, subject of um, Lightroom and Photoshop. If you want to know more, um, Richard does a lot of uh, tutorials on your blog, don't you? I do, yes, and, I do. Uh, let's, we'll bring up a ticker tape. What's your blog? Uh, so people can follow and see some more tutorials there. Yeah, it's blogs on adobe.com slash Richard Curtis and uh, I also have a Twitter handle as well at Richard Curtis. Okay so if you want to see more of uh, Richard's blog and some of his tips and techniques on uh, Lightroom and Photoshop products uh, check out his blog. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for listening. We'll see you next time. Great. Thanks Tom. Thank you.